We are back in the Port of Resort Bench. Oh yeah. This episode will focus on my favorite models in the collection, Kenji. This character has quite the unique backstory in the Portiverse, but before we dive into how the model was made, we'll just dive into Kenji's backstory in the Portiverse. Here we go. Kenji was built in Japan in 1966 for a rather unique purpose. Before he ever worked in Japan, he actually went to Sodor. But why to Sodor, you ask? Well, you see, in 1966, a World's Fair was being held at Ofsted Castle, and Kenji was sent to show off what was then Japan's pinnacle of high-speed rail travel, and was paid into a special silver livery for this occasion. The, the Ofsted World's Fair lasted from March 1966 to June of that same year. After this, Kenji went back to Japan for regular service. Kenji would work in Japan until around 2008, when he was retired from service, after many years of working. And meanwhile, the Earl of Sodor, Sir Robert Norbury II, heard about Kenji's history on Sodor and feared the worst when he was finding out he was withdrawn. And so, Sir Robert quickly flew over to Japan and purchased Kenji from the JNR. And I think that by the time Kenji was withdrawn, he was wearing this unique lime and gum delivery. Looks pretty cool. And Kenji was restored into his World's Fair condition by the Ops at Castle Relay by 2009. And Hiro, who is also from Japan, was understandably delighted to see another Japanese engine join the UCR, and the two became close friends almost immediately. And Kenji remains at the Ulfsa Kessler where he is either a static display or an engine hauling these skirts for the day. And he does this with pride to this very day. Now that we got the backstory of Kenji out of the way, let's dive into how I made this guy. A very, very, very lucky eBay find was ultimately how I managed to make this guy. I took the body apart completely, and I cleaned all the plastic bits and non-electric bits with soapy water. And once that was fully cleaned, I went to priming, and I primed everything in this flat white primer. Remember, always leave any primer spray paint to dry, for at least a full day before doing anything else. As if you try to do anything like masking or lining, and you peel out the tape, it'll end up ripping. And if you do any of the mess ups like that, the paint will peel as well and you have to start all over again. Anyway, so after the primer dried, I went in with a chrome spray paint. I initially sprayed every part of the body in this color as I wanted to be more accurate to the show. But I'll later change that, so we'll get that into a little bit. But while that chrome spray paint was drying, I went in with a blue color for the running board. It's the same blue I actually used with Thomas and Gordon, in fact. And after another day of drying, I put them all together to see how it looked. It was show accurate, but I felt like something was off, you know? Like, some of the colors didn't, like, pop. It wasn't, like, super, like, standoutish, you know? I began pondering this after a couple days, and I was thinking, Wait a minute! What if I just paint the roof in a gunmetal color and the front snout thing white? That would make it stand out, right? And so I did that. I went to the local hardware store and I picked out some gunmetal spray paint and then tried it out on the roof. Now this was what was holding the metal back for me. It looks so much better now, like it looks amazing now. And I then used a white paint pen for the painting the front bit. Super easy. After I was sorted out, I gave the model a coat of MAC clear. And just like that, Kenjo was complete. He is easily one of my favorites in the whole collection as he is the first Japanese model in my collection. Maybe one day I'll make a hero if I can find a D51 for a cheap price. Who knows? And also moving train as well. I definitely want to make moving train feature. He's really cool. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of the Portiverse Workbench. And I'll see you all in the next one.